are we? Okay, that explains it. So uh, I assume you can see my screen, right? Yeah, fine. Okay, just cool. yeah, thanks, Jose. Okay, just go ahead. You have half an hour and uh, take it away. Uh, so let me hide the floating controls. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, share our experience of uh, interfacing CUJ with Jetscape. Um, as a disclaimer, I should say that uh, either me or Roots uh, are a member of Jetscape. So I'll be sharing uh, with you the experience of using Jetscape as external user. And also, um, we are using the uh, public version uh, 2.0 of the Jetscape framework. So in this talk, uh, I'll first explain um, our physics motivation why we would like to um, use the um, JustScape framework to do our physics and uh, how we are going to implement the uh, CUJet model into JustScape. And uh, since this talk would be um, you know, uh, targeting on the potential users of JustScape framework, and I would like to show a few examples or a few details of uh, how uh, this implementation is realized in Coden. And I will also show our results. So uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that uh, Martini and CUJet are two existing um, simulation package of um, high energy um, particle energy loss in AA. Uh, so Martini assumes the Amy form formalism for uh, radi radiational process whereas CUJet assumes DGLV formalism. So uh, these two formalisms, they are very different uh, in assuming or in formulating the um, evolution of, of um, uh, radiational processes. So Amy assumes infinitely thick medium and takes, uh, keeps full uh, orders in opacity expansion. And since it assumes infinitely uh, thick, uh, there is no explicit time dependence in the Amy formalism. So one can say there is no form formation time effect. Whereas for uh, DGLV, it assumes thin medium. And in CUJ, uh, we take the first order, we keep only the first order in opacity expansion. And um, because we are assuming thin medium, we can uh, keep explicitly the time dependence in this um, differential rates. So um, these two rates are very different in the form formula. And I would like to mention that by fitting the um, coupling constants or uh, coupling parameters, uh, according to charge hydron IA, for instance, uh, these both of these two models can nicely describe the, uh, the PT dependence of, of uh, charge hydron IA. So our motivation, uh, our, our uh, work is motivated in uh, telling the difference between these two models. So first of all, let's take a rough look at uh, how the rates uh, looks. So here plots uh, the rate computed from the uh, formula shown in the previous slides. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Martini assumes no pass dependence. So it's not, um, uh, it's not, uh, it's independent of the pass lanes, whereas CUJet uh, does depend on the pass lanes. Uh, they're represented by different uh, you know, line styles. And also if we um, look at the, uh, momentum fraction dependence. So uh, Z here is the ratio of the uh, emitted gluon momentum versus the uh, initial uh, jet momentum. You can see a very uh, different behavior, asymptotic behavior as small z and large uh, z. And if you, uh, you know, move from left to right, um, one can see the difference in the temperature dependence. So uh, when we go from 0.2, uh, I mean, 200 MeV to 400 MeV, uh, the relative uh, 
difference between red and uh, blue lines are different. And so this tells us that uh, these two models had fundamentally different uh, splitting rates for uh, gluon emission process. And again, eventually uh, after fitting the parameters, uh, they look the same. So uh, the question is, are these two um, models discriminatable um, in you know, other, other observables, uh, I mean, observables other than the, uh, the charge hadron IA? So to get an intuitive picture, let's look at a um, event. Uh, the history of events assuming uh, Martini or CU jet energy, uh, energy loss models. So here I show some um, ideal test. So we evolved two uh, energetic quarks in the QGP break, which means uh, the medium is static, is homogeneous, <clears throat> and the temperature is constant. And these two jets, we evolved these two jets, one according to the uh, Martini model, the other according to the uh, jet, uh, the, the CU jet model. And we plot the trajectory of the um, energetic particle, whereas the color of the trajectory represents the energy of the uh, energetic quark. And also I showed the, um, the, the energy, I mean, the, the momentum of the uh, radiated gluon by uh, uh, black arrows. And the, for the elastic process, uh, we showed the recall, which is outgoing medium particle and incoming medium particle respectively by uh, green and red arrows. So, I mean, also uh, I selected two random events, uh, one from Martini and the other from CU Jet, uh, but I on purposely select these two events uh, with similar final state energy. So in the final state, both of them would uh, have energy close to um, uh, 12 GeV. So I, I, I would say from looking at these two trajectories, they are distinctive, even in uh, these microscopic configurations. Um, from Martini, you can see a lot of these uh, little black dots here. Um, they are the ultra soft um, radiated gluon corresponding to uh, this peak in the uh, 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 small z range. Whereas for uh, CU jet, the number of gluon, of radiated gluon, is much less compared to Martini. But uh, on average, these uh, gluons are more energetic. So this motivates us to uh, compare these two models in uh, more differential. Uh, um, uh, observ observables like uh, Fuji observables. So uh, at this point, we face a question. Um, I mean, Martini and CU Jet, they are two simulation packages on their own. Um, they are of course different in the, uh, in the model of uh, radiation process, but um, they are not identical in other um, components, let's say. Uh, the initial jet uh, distribution um, and the uh, say hydro background and the fragmentation function, uh, these components, they are say similar to each other, but they are not uh, identical by default. So one tough question is in comparing these two models or when looking at the more differential variables, how do we know the difference comes from the uh, difference in the energy loss model rather than the uh, rest. So uh, this question can, I mean, this, this issue can be solved by implementing the JetScape framework. So as has been uh, emphasized uh, a lot, 
So Jetscape is a framework which allows us to uh, perform apple to apple comparison of energy loss models because Jetscape uh, provides a um, global setting for the uh, initi initial hot particle distribution provided by Pythia. And the, also there, there is a um, model to, to uh, simulate the high virtuality particle radiation. And it provides a uh, universal uh, 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 control of the uh, hydro background. And again, uh, the hadronization and the jet clustering uh, processes are um, uh, provided there. So um, the only part that is, let's say, uh, can, can be modified in our, uh, in our work is the uh, low volatility uh, medium shower or, or energy loss uh, model, which could be Jetscape or Martini or other um, uh, energy loss models that has been um, you know, uh, integrated in the um, uh, default version. So um, in our work, we uh, you know, introduced the, uh, the CU jet energy loss model as a uh, alternative uh, way to simulate the low virtuality medium shower and compute the corresponding observables. So if you are a potential uh, uh, user of Jetscape and would like to know how exactly uh, we implement the um, CVJ framework in Jetscape, here is the answer. Uh, well, the uh, answer is quite uh, simple actually. So the first thing one would need to do is to uh, you know, write your own uh, code for the Angelos model, let's say CUJet, and put it in this folder. And you can see other folders here, like uh, other uh, models here, like Matter and Martini and LBT and ADSCFT. So these are the um, existing uh, models that uh, is, is uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, it comes with um, a public version of Jetscape. So in this, say, new files of CUJet, uh, we put the differential and the uh, integrated uh, rates there and simulates the in is inelastic and elastic uh, processes according to these rates. So with this, uh, say, code prepared, the way you when we need to call it is again, uh, straightforward. Uh, in the main function, like um, one, can, one can create a new file in this example folder, let's call it uh, cujet.cc, which contains the main function to be called. Um, in this say uh, uh, um, file, when we need to include the um, corresponding uh, head file of you know, your own module and uh, add an item according to this new jet uh, or can then do this uh, new model and add it in the evolution uh, history. So uh, one should need to be careful here because uh, there are several um, low virtuality energy loss models in parallel like uh, LBT and ADSFT and Martini. So, uh, one can only add one other than uh, two of this or, or multiple uh, of this uh, low virtuality and loss models. And finally, after you know creating this new uh, main uh, file, uh, one could add this file in the uh, CMake list, uh, and you know uh, it will become. Uh, um, compiled in the, um, in when you, when you uh, um, um, compile your, uh, the, the whole framework. So um, for this, you can search for uh, add executable for examples of how one should, uh, you know, add this new uh, file into the uh, CMake list. And I would like to mention that uh, if you are interested in the format of uh, 
you know, how this file should be prepared and how this main function should be prepared, you can always look at, you know, the um, uh, files, which is, uh, you know, provides a similar um, uh, function of what you need. And uh, it is very useful there. So um, after integrating the CUJet um, uh, kernel into Jetscape, now we are able to uh, run the full simulation and um, see how the observables uh, could be different uh, when we compare these two different models, CUJet and Matini. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in this, in both models, um, there is some uh, free parameters that could be tuned, which are corresponding to the strength of the strong coupling. So uh, in this work, we uh, tune the strong coupling independently for these two models, such that both of them could, ma could match the um, charge hydrogen IA at um, uh, zero to 5%, uh, 2176, TV uh, lala collisions. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this curve are tuned to be the same. And by tuning these two curves to be the same, um, it is not surprising to observe the uh, uh, good agreement uh, across other centrality ranges. So this is charge hydrogen IA. And if we move on to look at the jet RIA, again, we observe that um, the, uh, simula the simulation result by these two models uh, look similar, and both of them are um, I mean agree well with the experimental data. Uh, this is not surprising because uh, a good portion of the uh, jet RIA or or say uh, energy loss of the full jet is controlled by the um, uh, elastic uh, scattering, because uh, when we need elastic scattering to uh, reflect the, the energy out of the cone size. So uh, CUJ and Martini are um, uh, very similar in the elastic scattering uh, process. Uh, so it's not surprising that jet RIA are very similar uh, to each other. And another observer one can observe, one, one can measure is the um, radius dependence. So in experiments, one can measure the um, particle number di distribution as a function of this uh, radius. So delta is the, um, let's say delta five is the um, difference of azimuthal angle for the charge hadron and the azimuthal angle of the jet. And similarly, eta is the rapidity. So this tells us um, how the particles distribute in the transverse direction of the jet. And one can measure this uh, distribution for uh, lead lead and for uh, proton proton collisions and take the ratio. And so, I mean, this ratio tells us um, how the medium modifies uh, such a distribution. And as you can see here, um, the results given by CUJ and Martini are similar to each other. Again, uh, which is not surprising because the um, transverse distribution um, would be modified mostly by the uh, elastic scattering. And again, they're similar. So from these two tests, we can see the jet array and transverse dis uh, density distribution, they are not sensitive to the model difference. So um, in our study, we do see uh, observables that are, um, um, you know, that, that could capture the difference between these two models, which is the um, fragmentation function ratio. So fragmentation function is the um, distribution of, um, of the, uh, say, uh, momentum fraction of the hadron uh, versus the momentum of the uh, the full jet, and one can measure this fragmentation function for I mean as a function of uh, this ratio or uh, the transverse momentum of the uh, charge hadron. So 
these two um, com these two uh, um, uh, observables basically tells the same story, but uh, uh, they are different in weighting um, different uh, uh, jets. I mean, events with with uh, different jet momentum. So, uh, although this uh, ratio will require high statistics. But we already see some um, systematic trend um, when we compare these two models. Say so when we focus on uh, this box and this box across in different centralities, we can see um, Martinez is systematically above CUJET for this um, third uh, box uh, from, from right to right. So should you from right five, to, yes. Five, five minutes. Ah, sure, thanks. And um, for the uh, left, uh, the, the rightmost box, um, the CUJET uh, uh, result is systematically above the Martini result. So this is uh, kind of very expected because uh, by looking at the fragmentation function, we are uh, measuring the detailed structure of this radiation. I mean, uh, collinear radiation, and we should be able to see the difference. So at this point, uh, we are not that satisfied because uh, from this plot, they are very distinctive. If we could count the number of these uh, black dots, we can really tell the difference between these two models. However, unfortunately, uh, in real experiment, we are not possible to count the, uh, or to measure this uh, radiated gluons directly. However, um, some similar process can be performed and can be proposed, which is that rather than looking at the gluon radiation uh, processes, we would like to look at the uh, photon radiation processes. Uh, as you can tell, um, these photons, uh, once they are emitted from the uh, energetic gluon, uh, energetic uh, quark, they hardly interact with the uh, uh, with uh, QCD medium, and we can measure these photons directly. So, the um, uh, you know one thing we are looking what we are working on is that. Um, we would like to uh, measure the and compute the um, uh, distribution of the Bramstrom photons and compare uh, Bramstrom photons assuming one model and the other. By doing so, we should be able to uh, provide a independent uh, tool to discriminate these two models, the, uh, the, the Martini and Siljan models. So uh, here brings me to my summary. Uh, first of all, I would like to deliver a big thank you to the uh, Jetscape collaboration and uh, especially the Jetscape summer and winter schools. Uh, they are, I mean, I find these schools very helpful in providing a lot of uh, very helpful information of the uh, framework itself and also the physics background. And in this talk, um, I shared with you our experience of and the results of uh, implementing CUJET in the JustGate framework. And um, we find that um, uh, fragmentation functions and the photon distribution um, could be a, a probe to discriminate the CUJET and Martini uh, models. And finally, since this talk is uh, facing to potential uh, users, external users of the framework, I would like to uh, share with you a reminder uh, in my experience. Uh, so the framework is compiled uh, dynamically, which means suppose um, you compile your, your um, uh, uh, code and obtain some executable, and then you change the code and recompile the existing executable, uh, they, might, they, they may change accordingly and update it automatically. So uh, one should be careful in, uh, you know, uh, trying different things in, in the hard coded code and recompile. So uh, that's all I would like to share. Thank you. 
Thanks, Sujay. <clears throat> Before I go to questions, let me comment on behalf of Jetscape. I'm sure I speak for Abhijit and everyone else in Jetscape that um, I find this to be fantastic. I mean, we <clears throat> we started off some years ago, you know, to to propose and then eventually construct a framework. And it's a framework, not a generator, as you said. And and the idea was to to incorporate other models than we have within the collaboration. And you have done that beautifully. This is a wonderful um, proof of principle. And we hope it's one of uh, many models that get incorporated into Jetscape so we can really do a, a systematic study as exactly you've shown. So I, I think this is really tremendous. Thanks very much. Okay, Thanks. questions, questions from the, uh, from the students. The questions for Sujay. Questions from the non-students. So, okay, I'll ask a question. Um, mm -hmm. so you, you show comparisons, but but you know, another component of, of Jetscape, mm -hmm. which of course you didn't have a chance to talk about, is Bayesian inference, <clears throat> which is really, I mean, you you did what you, you know, what you can without the Bayesian inference to compare to the Hadron and Jet RA, but there's a vast um, vast array of data beyond that. I mean, and even within that framework, one wants to do a rigorous, you know, a comparison to really, really in a in a in a in a strictly correct way, compare um, the theory and data, also taking account of the covariances and the data and all of that. So, have you thought about extending this to a Bayesian inference? Of course, we in Jetscape we're very interested in that. Would would want to collaborate with you on that? Have you thought about incorporating a Bayesian inference into your analysis? Uh, well, this is a very good question. So, uh, my understanding is as as, as follows. Uh, so, as you uh, say, uh, in this work, we are trying to uh, provide a proof of principle uh, study of uh, incorporating CUJ in, in Jetscape. And this would, out, would be our, I mean, this is our uh, first step of uh, our analysis. And a more rigorous um, and, I mean, uh, statistically uh, sensible comparison uh, should be done in a Bayesian way. Uh, I completely agree with that. Uh, maybe the bottom neck for our concern is um, um, the, I mean, uh, I, I know that there are Bayesian analysis in the soft sector uh, in, in Jetscape, uh, but I wonder, uh, suppose one would like to do so for the hard sectors, for the uh, high energy uh, observables, would it be that efficient in, I mean, in, in, in sense of uh, computational um, um, expense? I will be, I mean, this would be my concern for uh, Bayesian analysis, uh, you know, for CUJET or other models in, in Jetscape. So uh, I'll take that as a question to, to us. Um... <laughs> In fact, we are just wrapping up a massive production run using NSF high performance computing facilities. We got a very large allocation there. We're just wrapping that up. So the answer is it's compu computationally intensive. Um, it's doable. We have the framework. Um, mm -hmm. And um, well, we there's one publication, the QHAT publication, it's very much more mm -hmm. coming. I would refer you actually to uh, Raymond's talk at Quark Matter gave a similar one at the the uh, Phoenix School that Anne just referred to um, mm -hmm. on exactly this Bayesian Bayesian analysis in hard sectors. So yes, this absolutely is coming together. It's the first publication mm -hmm. principle and then very much more coming. So uh, there's much to discuss. Oh, uh, that sounds fantastic. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really open and looking forward to the, uh, you know, this possibility. Okay, questions. I'm sorry I'm dominating the question period, but if others don't ask questions, I, I will do that. Uh, any other questions or comments? Going once, going twice. Okay, thanks, Sujay. Fantastic. Look forward to um, many more discussions on this and uh, 